Hi, fishy folks, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about fish food. Just the basics for us dummies. Grab yourself a healthy snack and beverage. Stand by. Welcome back, fishy folks. Today we're going to be talking about fish food, you know, how to feed it, the different kinds, some tips and tricks, uh, all in a simple, basic, easy to understand way because, quite frankly, I'm just a dumb guy with a camera. I mean, I'm quite handsome and a little funny, but uh, the fact is, I, I'm not that smart. So I like to explain things in a very simple, easy to understand way that hopefully you guys can learn from. If you like that kind of content, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And if you are already a subscriber, thank you so much. I generally really appreciate it. So, fish food, there's a bunch of different kinds and uh, most of the fish food that uh, I'm gonna talk about was given to me by either the supplier or uh, the manufacturer. Just wanted to let you guys know that. But uh, everything I'm talking about, I use in the fish room. I feed and have first-hand, first-world experience with it. So, the different kinds of foods, uh, we have dry food, which is the most common, usually the most, ex uh, the, sorry, the least expensive and the easiest to store. And so dry food, we have flake food, which is my favorite, uh, pellets floating and sinking, sticks, wafers, granules, different kinds. We have live food, like uh, baby brine shrimp, which I feed every day in my fish room. Uh, different worm cultures, like grindle worms or banana worms. Daphne is another popular live food. Uh, then, of course, we have frozen food. Again, baby brine shrimp, cyclops, blood worms are just some examples. Freeze-dried food, not a fan. Uh, gel food, like this uh, rapashi here, one of my favorites, especially for the plecos. We have medicated food, species-specific food, and vacation blocks. Now, real quick about vacation blocks, I'm just gonna get this out of the way uh, right away. Don't use them. Use them early on in my career, uh, in my fish keeping career, maybe 20, 25 years ago. Clouded the water, lost some fish. I was only gone for three days. I know better now. Uh, really, there's no need for the fish that I keep. Plecos, angels, quarries, uh, even my flower horns. I've been, I've been away for 14 days. Nobody fed the fish food. Nobody came down here at all. No problem. Um, there's biofilm and microorganisms in an established fish tank. The fish will just eat off that for a while. So I wouldn't really worry about feeding fish while you're on vacation, unless you have something very, very sensitive, and then you probably already have a plan. Another quick note is I wouldn't have anyone feed your fish while you're on vacation unless they keep fish themselves. All right, that's just me. One of the most important things to look at when you're choosing fish food for your fish tank, whether it's a community tank, a breeding project, uh, a fish room with 60 tanks, is protein content, protein level. Now this is brine shrimp plus flakes from Ocean Nutrition, and it has 55% protein. That's probably too much to feed every day to guppies, but a couple times a week, three, four times a week, probably no problem. Uh, too much protein in guppies and most live bearers can cause some internal issues and uh, obviously we don't want any of that. Uh, as an example though, this is, these are Dr. Basilier bio fish uh, food flake. This is the regular flake. I'm not sure this is readily available in the United States. I know kgeaquatics.com has it. That's where I got it. Uh, and this has 45% protein, which is sort of in the range of what I like to feed every day. Somewhere between mm, high 30s to about 45% I like to feed uh, as a normal food every day for my guppies, especially breeding projects, because those ladies need, need all the protein they can get pretty much. Now, another thing uh, when it comes to choosing fish food is what type of eater are the uh, fish that you're, you keep? Are they carnivores? That means they eat primarily meat in their diet. Are they herbivores? Which means they primarily eat plant material like ottos or uh, some bristlenose plecos, some plecos in general. Um, and then of course there's omnivores and most fish are truly omnivores like guppies, uh, they'll eat anything. Uh, like most live bearers, angelfish as an example are omnivores. <clears throat> so it's good to know 
what type of eater you have. As an example, some plecos only are herbivores and need wood in their diet. Some are carnivores and need wood in their diet also. So you really have to know what type of eater you have when you're choosing your fish food. Now, the question I get a lot is, how much food do I feed? Well, it really depends on, <coughs> I'm fine, how much, um, how many fish you have in your tank and how often you want to change the water. A, a good tip here is the more you feed, there's, the more poop there's going to be, the more poop there's going to be, the more water changes you're going to have to do. And that's just common sense, right? Uh, but a good rule of thumb is put in enough food that the fish will uh, eat in one minute. Some people say two minutes, some people say 30 seconds. I use the one minute rule. Another really important uh, tip when it comes to feeding fish is variety. Uh, I'm lucky. I have probably 20 different varieties of dry food in my fish room right now, but not everyone has that luxury. So if you can afford it, I recommend two or three different types of food. They could all be flake food, they could all be pellets, it doesn't matter. I also recommend different manufacturers because usually that means there's gonna be different uh, main ingredients, which is where you want the variety. Uh, so as an example, if you choose a food like this, Northfin Flake food, this is uh, the krill flake, which is really good stuff. <laughs> Um, as one of your foods, choose something else with another main ingredient. As an example, the brine fish, the brine shrimp flake from Ocean Nutrition. Now you got krill, you got brine shrimp, two great ingredients. And then maybe throw in something else, a pellet or something uh, with a different main ingredient. Now, if you can't afford two or three different types of food, which not everyone can, I recommend a food that has, and this is gonna sound funny, different color flakes. In most cases, when you have different color flakes, that means there's different ingredients, main ingredients in them. So uh, I know that that uh, the North Finn community flake is their three flake foods combined, and then uh, it makes the community. So it's krill, maybe spirulina and something else. I don't remember what they are, but they're, they're different colors, they're different foods. And that's another great choice. But uh, I also like this Ocean Nutrition Discus food. There we go. Uh, it's got different color flakes. The two main ingredients are, uh, two main proteins, I should say, which are the two first ingredients, are different. So you get different nutrients and micronutrients uh, for them. So variety is key. Now when it comes to a feeding schedule, do I feed once a day, twice a day, three times a day? A typical community tank once a day is fine. Um, as I said, feed enough food uh, that they're gonna eat in about one minute, and that's that. You can feed twice, you can do two smaller feedings. Uh, you can skip a day if you want. People do that sometimes. Uh, they believe fasting their fish is good for them. I don't, I don't fast for any other reason than I'm shipping the next day or in two days, so we gotta fast them, but. Um, a couple other things I want to talk about food are, are pellets or sinking food because the flakes and the floating pellets typically are used for uh, top feeders or middle feeder or middle swimmers. So we got to worry about the guys on the bottom, the plecos, the quarries, the autos. Um, my go-to sinking wafer for um, plecos are kelp wafers. And these are pretty easy. You just throw them in the tank walk away that's how you feed them uh i usually go one wafer for two or three plecos medium size you can break them in half if you want to um and don't overfeed maybe one if you have one pleco if you can break it in half put that half in or put one in every other day you don't want to overfeed them you don't want to cloud the water um, some other go-to foods for the bottom feeders is Rapashi, which is gel food. Um, there's a couple other companies that make gel food, but Rapashi really is, is the first, and in my opinion, the best. Uh, basically, you make it like jello, and then you can put it in molds, or you can cut it, and feeding it is really easy. You just drop it in and walk away, just like a kelp wafer. All right, fishy folks, I think that does it uh, for my back to basics fish food. Uh, tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day. I'm old, so I got a list here so I don't forget things. We got a couple different types of food. Uh, for dry food, we have flake food, 
uh, and pellets, and uh, pellets are both sinking and floating. Then of course we have sticks, wafers, which sink of course, uh, granules. Then we have live food. I'm just reading a list, that's dumb. I'm okay. All that stuff in a basic, simple, easy to understand method because, not method, uh, freeze dried, medicated, species. Uh, hiya, fishy folks, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about fish food. Sort of a dumbed down, easy to understand version about how to feed fish and uh, just about fish food in general. So, do me. Do, uh, la, 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 la. Don't do that. Hiya, fish. No, I like my other intro. It was good, so we're going to keep that. Uh, really high in protein, which I like, which we're going to talk about in a second. Now, see, I've got to kind of get this down, don't I? Um, if you've watched any of my other review videos, you know I don't necessarily talk good about things that I don't like. So, yeah, who cares? You don't care. I don't care. Who cares? Uh, bloodworms, cyclops. Real quick note about bloodworms. I don't recommend feeding. Feeding. See, it's a problem. It's hot in the fish room. Kicked up the heat a couple days ago to make sure we got the breeding going on. A little, little sweaty, a little shiny. Frozen food, again, the baby brine shrimp, uh, which is quite easily accessible if you can get frozen food, which is what easily accessible means. I really suck at this today. 